Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Okay, today I like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. Okay, so for this video, I'm going to continue the discussion on radiate immunity. Okay, so this video, I'm going to do a quick introduction. Okay, what is field uniformity? Okay, so this will be the objective of this video. On my next video, okay, I'm going to discuss the process of field uniformity. But over here, this video, I'm going to explain what is actually this field uniformity and why we need to do this field uniformity based on this RI standard, IEC-EN61000-4-3. Okay, so this will be the part 64 series discussion on EMC. So guys, if you're keen to know more about EMC, okay, please take a look on the playlist okay, under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, okay, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome to ask me your question okay, through the comment. Okay, so this is because I hardly check this email. So guys, okay, please ask me through the comment. Okay, before I continue, I like to urge you guys to help this channel by like the video. Okay, please press the like button now. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Okay, firstly, let's quickly revisit why we need to do this radiate immunity. Okay, so this radiate immunity test, okay, in fact, is a key aspect of EMC testing. Okay, so under this EMC testing, we have emission, we have immunity. And under this immunity, okay, we can further stream into radiate immunity and also conducted immunity. Okay, so this video, okay, as I mentioned, we are going to discuss few uniformity. And in fact, few uniformity only need to perform on radiate immunity. Okay, so basically this radiate eye is mainly designed to assess how well your DOT or system can actually withstand the electromagnetic interference from external source. So in short, we are going to inject EM wave into your DUT and we are going to see how your DUT actually can survive the test or not. Okay, so this is the key purpose of radiate immunity. Okay, so this test is critical and this is to ensure that the electronic device function properly okay, when they actually expose into the real world electromagnetic field. Field uniformity in radiate immunity testing refers to how even the electromagnetic field is distributed across the test area okay, where the DUT is placed. So in this diagram here, you can see that this is actually so-called 4 by 4 points. So they are actually in total 16 points. So this is where you put your DUT. So this is what it means. Okay, so we are going to do the test area to put our DUT. And we need to ensure that these 16 points, they are so-called evenly distributed. Okay, so the biggest difference is only plus minus 6 dB, which we are going to take a closer look later on. But over here, the key objective to do this field uniformity is to ensure that all the points are evenly distributed. Okay, so across all the so-called test area, which is 4 by 4, 16 points. Field uniformity is critical to ensure the result of the radiate immunity tests are accurate and repeatable. So in short, when we actually do this field uniformity, okay, we need to ensure that the result will be accurate and we are able to do this from different test house. Okay, so therefore, this thing must be repeatable. Okay, poor uniformity could result in either underestimate or overestimate the DUT. Okay, so over here, you can imagine these are all the 16 points. Let's say okay, this point actually has much, much lower as compared to this point number six. So therefore, you can see that over here, you can see that this will be, let's say, overestimate, and this point will be underestimate. So hence, okay, depend on your orientation, okay, where is your DUT. So therefore, it may or may not pass the test. Let's say they are over here, they are not able to pass the test. But when they are actually over here, they will be able to pass the test. So in short, this few uniformity ensure that all the 16 points has almost the same so-called vote per meter so as to ensure that 
this thing is evenly distributed. Okay, why we need to do this few uniformity? Okay, first we need to have an accurate test. Okay, as I mentioned earlier on, okay, if the electromagnetic field is not uniform, which means that they are not constant, different part of the DUT may experience varying field strength. As I mentioned earlier on, okay, some may have higher, some may be lower. Okay, so therefore this may lead to inconsistent test result. Okay, this can lead to either under testing or over testing the device which I have just illustrated on the previous page. Next will be compliant with standards. Okay, various EMC standards such as IEC 61 000-4-3, mainly for radio immunity testing, require a certain level of field uniformity testing across the test area to ensure reliable result. So in short, there are actually three volt per meter or 10 volt per meter. Okay, so these are all the standard. So therefore, we need to ensure that a certain level of Few uniformity okay, across the test area so as to ensure that our result will be consistent and reliable. Next will be the reproducibility and the reproduct, whether we are able to reproduce this result. Okay, the uniform field ensure that testing can be reliable repeat under the same condition, okay, regardless of when or where the test is conducted. So in short, you just imagine that your DOT must be able to so-called repeat the same result when you actually go from test house one to another test house two. So therefore, this is very essential so as to ensure that all the results will be able to be repeat and we can reproduce. Let's say we fill this test, okay, we must be able to see that this test actually fill at another test house. So basically, this is the reason okay, why we need to do this field uniformity. Okay, next. Okay, according to the IEC 61000-4-3 standard, okay, few uniformity must be measured and verified within the test area before conducted this radiate immunity testing. Okay, so before you actually can do RI, okay, you need to do this few uniformity first. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is to ensure the 16 point, they have about the same so-called volt per meter. Okay, so as to ensure that the Test will be uniform, no over testing or under testing. Okay, the measurement across a grip of 16 point arranged in a 1.5 times 1.5 meter. So over here, this will be 1.5 meter, this will be 1.5 meter. Okay, so this is what illustrates at the location of the DUT. So you are going to put, okay, for example, your DUT okay, uh, with this so called 16 point here. Okay, the fuel should not should be sorry the view should be uniform across at least 75 percent of the measurement point okay which means that 75 percent of them okay must ensure that they will be uniform okay don't worry so much on my next video i will explain this in a clearer uh, manner okay but over here you just need to know okay this view must be uniform at least 75 percent of them the variation in the view across the test area should not exceed plus minus 6 dB from the nominal value. Okay, for example, okay, so as I mentioned here, uh, on my next video, I will further explain this two point. But at this moment, you just need to know that the field should be uniform, okay, and at least 75% 75, 75 of the measurement point must be uniform. Next, the variation, okay, they must not be more than plus minus 6 dB. Okay, so this is a quick discussion, okay, of this field uniformity under this IEC 61 000-4-3 standard. Okay, how few uniformity is achieved? Okay, let's quickly come on the discussion on the different aspect here. Okay, so firstly is on the antenna position. Okay, antenna used to generate the EM wave. Okay, so basically the antenna okay, generate the EM wave with the help of signal generator. Okay, so the signal generator generate the signal. Okay, so what next is basically they go through the amplifier. So after that they pass to the antenna. So the antenna actually release the EM wave okay, in the chamber. Okay, so therefore they should be positioned, the antenna should be positioned to create an even distribution of the field across the test area. Next, okay, so we definitely need to have this chamber. Okay, the tests are often performed in an adequate chamber, okay, which absorb reflection of the radiate wave and minimize interference, leading to a more uniform field, okay, which we are going to discuss in this video furthermore later on tuning the field okay, adjustment to the signal generator amplifier and antenna placement 
may be necessary to achieve uniform field distribution. Okay, so in short, okay, we can vary several parameters. For example, we can vary the signal generator so as to achieve a constant vote parameter. Or we can also vary the amplifier so as to achieve a constant vote parameter. Or the antenna placement, it could be a horizontal or vertical polarization. Okay, so basically in short, okay, we need to adjust the different six gen and also amplifier to ensure the vote parameter will be uniform. The measurement of fuel strength. Okay, typically we will use this fuel probe to measure the fuel strength. Okay, the fuel probe will give us, let's say, something like vote parameter, and therefore this fuel probe are mainly used to measure the actual fuel strength at various points. Okay, as I mentioned earlier on, there are 16 points. So the fuel probe is actually located at the 16 point and measure the fuel strength. Okay, so as to do this test volume to confirm the uniformity. Okay, so in short, this is a quick discussion how we actually do this field uniformity. Okay, on my next video, okay, definitely I will do more discussion how we actually do this process of field uniformity. Okay, so next, okay, because a highly intense radiate field is created over a considerable volume during this test. Okay, so in short, we actually generate a very high power of EM wave. Okay, so this can actually extend far beyond the test area and potentially interferes with radio and TV broadcasts. Okay, although now we don't have so-called many uh, devices that are going to receive radio or TV broadcasts. Okay, however, this signal strength that we actually generate to test, okay, so they can be potential to create interference with the radio and TV broadcast or maybe even aircraft communication. Okay, so pre to prevent this, okay, the radio immunity tests are actually conducted in a shield room. Okay, so we actually have a shield room to contain the EM wave. Okay, so however, okay, because of the shield room, we definitely will have reflection. And we actually have reflection from the wall, ceiling, and floor of a basic shield room. They can actually cause issue with few uniformity. Okay, so now once we have reflection, Okay, we cannot guarantee so much on the field uniformity anymore. So therefore, we need to minimize reflection as much as possible. Okay, so this is typically, okay, so we can solve the reflection at simply by lying on the metal surface inside the room with RF absorbing material. So these are the form type of RF absorbing material. So firstly, we have various type of absorber okay, that are available okay, with the most common being called a carbon loaded foam. Okay, so basically, you can just imagine these are all the carbon loaded foam. So basically, they take care of the high frequency. Okay, so basically, however, they actually take out significant space because of the shape. You can see that they can be quite long and therefore, because of this, they potentially actually occupy quite a significant space. Okay, so beside this form, we also have ferrite tile. Okay, you just imagine this is a ferrite tile. Okay, ferrite tile and then the form actually placed onto the ferrite tile. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier on, this all this form is taking care on the higher frequency. The ferrite tile actually take care of lower frequency. Okay, so this ferrite tile, they are actually very, very heavy. Okay, so I personally have carried quite a fair bit of ferrite tile. It's actually very difficult and tedious to lay the ferrite tile onto the chamber. Okay, so both type of absorber, they are actually considerably more expensive than the plain metal shield room itself. Okay, so in short, in fact, this ferrite tile is actually much, much costly. Okay, so this form is also costly, but okay, as I mentioned, actually typically the ferrite tile is even more expensive than those from carbon loaded form type. Okay, so in essential, okay, calibrate an adequate chamber involved transmitting RFU inside the chamber from the test antenna and measure the fuel strength in vote permitter at specific point within the chamber. Okay, so the test volume or the test area. So this is the antenna. So these are the 16 points that we are going to test. So this 16 point we have a few probe. Okay, for example, we put it over here. So they will measure in terms of vote permitter. So basically over here you can see that we slowly do this point by point. We are able to capture all the vote permitter. Okay, so this process actually determines whether the field meet the uniformity criteria. A table is then created showing the signal level required at each test frequency to achieve the desired field strength when averaged over the test volume. Okay, so 
when we actually do this few informality, typically our DUT or EUT will not be inside this calibration. Okay, but the few level within the test volume are permit to vary by plus 6 dB and 0 dB from the nominum value. So in short, as I mentioned earlier on, this will be the so-called the vary. Okay, so we cannot be more than this vary here. Okay, so guys, again, before I continue, if you have learned something from this video, okay, please help this channel by like this video. I will be also highly appreciate if you can help this channel by subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much, guys. Okay, let me continue the discussion. Okay, the EUT are tested by placing them in the test volume of the chamber, as I mentioned earlier on. Okay, with the transmitting antenna in the same position as used for calibration, and then replay the file of signal strength into the antenna. So in short, okay, so when we actually do this field uniformity, okay, we know how much to adjust the signal strength of the signal generator, how much to adjust on the amplifier. So we actually do a playback okay, or replay. So when we actually do this field uniformity, remember we do not put our DUT inside. So after we actually finish the, the field uniformity, okay, we have the profile. Okay, how much will be the signal generator? How much will be the amplifier? So after that, we will put our DUT to do the testing. So again, with the DUT, okay, we already know the signal generator level and we also know the amplifier level. So therefore, as I mentioned earlier on, we actually replay the file of signal level so as to achieve certain value of vote per meter. Okay, naturally, the actual few levels actually generated during a test are influenced by the DUT and also its cable. Okay, and therefore it can be very significantly, okay, often by more than plus 15 dB from place to place around the DUT due to reflection, cable resonance, etc. Okay, however, okay, as I mentioned earlier on, when we actually do this field uniformity, we do it without our DUT inside. And because of this, when we actually place the DUT inside, okay, the, the condition may be very, okay, so as I seen over here, as I mentioned over here, the condition can even vary from plus minus 15 dB, okay, from place to place around the DUT, okay, this is because of reflection, and we also have this cable resonance, okay, so later on on my next video, I will explain this, however, this variation is typical when an EUT is actually exposed to an RFU in a real-world condition. An adequate chamber feature and absorber on the floor, unlike a semi-adequate chamber, which has a metal ground plane floor, some test labs actually use semi-adequate chamber as indoor open area test site for measuring emission, okay, adding as much absorber as needed to cover the floor and convert the chamber into an adequate chamber to achieve the EM 61000-4-3 field uniformity. So in short, okay, so because some night, okay, we actually also need to do emission. Okay, so on my next slide, I will explain this. And because of this, we need to have absorber to cover the metal ground as much as possible. Okay, so this is what I mean. Okay, some testers actually need to use this adequate chamber, okay, in fact, for both tasks, radiate tasks and also immunity tests. Okay, so therefore, we actually avoid the height scan required for emission tests with a ground plane. Okay, although this type of emission test is not fully compliant, okay, most companies found that adding 6 dB to their adequate chamber emission result provide a very good correlation with a fully compliant test. Okay, so over here you can see that okay, although this is so-called not fully compliant, so typically okay, if we add 6 dB, so this is what we call quite a significant acceptable okay, so-called as compared to the fully compliant test. Let's do a quick conclusion. Okay, so this field uniformity is a critical factor in radiate immunity tests. And we need to ensure that it meets the standard like IEC 61000-4-3 is in fact essential okay, for obtaining valid and reliable test results. Okay, proper chamber design, antenna position, and measurement techniques are required to achieve this. Okay, so with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Okay, please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.